Hello, my name is Father Jack Costello. <clears throat> I'm the rector of Epiphany Cathedral. Thank you very much for viewing our webpage. In this section of our webpage, I give a short reflection on the previous Sunday's gospel. This past Sunday was from Matthew, where Jesus is away with the disciples, and he asks them, who do people say that I am? And they give him an answer to that. And then he asks them, who do you say that I am? And Peter responds, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Depending on who we are, we can misread or misunderstand, though, <clears throat> the point of today's gospel passage. For example, some people in hearing this past weekend's gospel may focus on the question that Jesus asked Peter and the disciples, who do you say that I am? And other people might focus on the statement about Peter and the keys to the kingdom, that Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom. However, when St. Matthew was composing his gospel, we have to remember some 50 or 60 years after the death and resurrection of Christ, the church then was certainly nothing at all like the church we have today. For instance, there was no such thing as the Vatican or cardinals or bishops or a universal catechism or a worldwide institution overseeing people's spiritual lives as well as spiritual practices. The Christian community of Matthew's day lived literally from hand to mouth under political persecution and religious turmoil in the community and with their Jewish brothers and sisters. The Roman legions had completely demolished the temple in Jerusalem at the, by this time, and the infant church suffered daily from organized harassment from the imperial soldiers. And so Matthew reminds his readers that the gates of the netherworld would never overcome God's people, no matter what. The opening verse of today's gospel places Jesus at Caesarea Philippi which was the site of no less than 14 pagan temples dedicated to various false gods, ranging from the Syrian god Baal to Pan, the Greek god of nature. In the middle of that city was a great white temple built by Herod, dedicated to the so-called divinity of Caesar. Caesarea Philippi also stood near a deep cave with spring water flowing from it, which pagans thought of as the gates to the underworld. As Jesus stood near this deep, dark cave, he assured his disciples that the gates of hell would never overcome God's people. And so we do well to recall that when you and I experience the sins or human weakness within our church, we need to remind ourselves of Peter's words in today's gospel, that Jesus alone is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Peter's profession of faith <coughs> in Christ is the solid rock upon which all future believers can build their hopes and their dreams. Christ and Christ alone will save us from the gates of hell and the netherworld. As you and I strive personally to accept Jesus as the Lord of our lives and the Savior of our souls, then we can live out that faith by sincere devotion to him and also by using the keys of our faith in loving service of others. When Matthew wrote that Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom to Peter, he may have been recalling the story in today's first reading, or he could have also remembered a tradition from the rabbis which claimed that after the destruction of the Jerusalem temple, the keys were symbolically thrown back up to heaven because of the failure of the religious leaders in their spiritual duties. In any case, now St. Matthew sees Peter and the entire Christian community opening the doors of faith and salvation to the whole world. When you and I point others to the heart and face of Christ by telling stories of God's unchanging love revealed in the Gospels, or by celebrating Christ's ongoing presence in the sacraments, or by loving service of the poor and the needy, we all carry the keys to God's work in our world. Think of the keys all of us hold to welcome or forgive a family member who feels unwanted or excluded. Think of the keys we hold to unlock the chains of hunger around us.
Think of the keys we hold to open the hearts and minds of our young people to Christ's love. And think of the keys we hold for freeing a worried heart or a lonely shut-in. This can only be done when you and I answer for ourselves the question of the gospel. Who is Christ for me? Is he the rock and the foundation of my life today? Or someone I just think about at Mass now and then? Are his values the values of my life and my family? And do I strive to put on the mind and the heart of Christ each day? Or do I live only by the agenda of the media or the so-called priorities of the culture we find ourselves in? If we want Christ to truly be for us what he was for Peter, then we must unlock the door of our hearts to him today and every day. May we keep our eyes fixed on the Lord then and ask him to take complete control of our lives and change us. For he is the Savior who will never abandon his people. God bless you. Have a great week.